What's up guys and welcome back to our LP of Expeditions Conquistador. My name is Splattercat and you're here today at the Nerd Castle with me to check out a fantastic game once again. So, where had we been? Where were we going and what is our plan for this episode? Well, we had just kind of struck up a plan with the leader of the Amazons to murder an official in Tenochtitlan. And so we're actually riding Tenochtitlan pretty hard right now. We've been we've been pretty rough on him, but since I select my when I select my enemies, I like to go full bore. I don't mess around. I don't leave any question where my loyalties lie, and right now we are just going full on steam to the wind. Just crazy amounts of coal. How many metaphors can I mess up before I finish this sentence? <laughs> but in any case, our velocity is moving against the Aztecs at this point. The die has been absolutely cast, so let's take a look at our map and let's get a feel for our heading. Looks like Tenochtitlan is slightly to our southeast, which is where we're going to head because we have a... Ele well, not an elected priest, but kind of a jerkwad priest who thinks he's super awesome and likes to sacrifice human beings. We're going to go off with his head to convince the Amazons that we're good people. I'm thinking if this turns out alright, we may be able to win them as allies. And so we go to the Temple of Tenochtitlan, and Mamatsli once again greets us outside. Honored El Gato del Splatter, it is good to see that you return. Do you bring news pertaining to our problem? With no further ado, we show him the talisman, and we hand it to him, and he says... I recognize this talisman. I am certain that she would not have given it willingly. You have done all of Tenochtitlan a great service by killing her. Before we arrange for your reward, you and your warriors would do me a great honor if you will dine with me in the Grand Hall of the Temple. We accept the invitation, and he sends us away for a few hours while his servants prepare a feast in gratitude of our service. You order your men to conceal knives about their person before you all show up the feast hall to partake in the celebrations. You allow your people to eat before you carry out your plan, which spreads quite a bit of mirth throughout your ranks, but you expressly forbid them to drink any intoxicating refreshments. Conveniently, Mamatsli has elected to keep the feast a secret Everyone who isn't attending to everyone who isn't attending out of fear of having more guests than he is willing to entertain, no doubt. Halfway through the dinner, you sense an opportunity when most of the Aztec guests are showing distinct signs of intoxication and the guards are about to change shifts. You must strike now before the guards retire so that all witnesses may be eliminated. We signal the attack. Oh, we've actually got a fight. Okay, cool. That's cool. I thought it was just going to be like an event where we just slaughter everybody because we're trying to do this like stealth mode, like Splinter Cell dropping down from the ceiling with ropes around our waists, doing all kinds of crazy boondock saint stuff, accidentally killing everybody by like tripping over a table and throwing our knives. You know, all that kind of wild stuff. In any case, we're going to start on our turn. Oh dear. I don't like this at all. This arrangement is nasty. So let me take my doctor first and foremost and bring him over here. And we need to create a unified front of some sort as best as possible. Now I get the feeling most of these guys probably aren't going to be able to hold up much of a fight against us. But we're going to do the best we can with what we have. I'm going to try and get my doctor mostly out of the way. I mean, he's probably still going to end up taking damage. This is a really dark location to actually be messing around. But what I would prefer to do is I'll draw that over to there. And then what we'll do is go to there. And then over to here. Because I want everybody on the same side of the table. I want them to come to me. And so at this point, rather than do all kinds of crazy combat, although we may not have the option, let's kind of hang tight right here. And we'll just kind of create two main fronts. I know that's generally considered to be a massive mistake. We can throw a lantern, which is what I consider an intelligent idea right now in case these guys all decide to swarm around the side of the table. We are really outnumbered. God, this actually may turn out to be a debacle. But for now, let's see what they do here. Yeah, and they've got ranged weapons and things too, probably. This could get really nasty. If it's just a giant knife fight, I think we'll probably be fine. Because they're more than likely going to be nerfed. They did say that everyone here was intoxicated. The guards have weapons, so that's going to be a problem for us. I don't know if my doctor still is going to have his healing abilities. A lot of people seem like they're just trying to clear the location. Okay, so the civilians are going to try and run away. This may actually get really nasty. I don't really like the way that they've arranged this combat. It's less than stellar. I can't really tell that most of these people are drunk. I mean, the warriors are still pitting pretty hard. Let's see... God. Well, we're gonna have to knife fight it out over here. The best way to do it, I'm not really sure. But we'll try. I'm gonna have him stun this warrior right here. And then come over to here. 
to fight with this guy. We're probably going to lose both of them because it's outside of our little frontal assault area. But we'll probably be okay. All things considered, we can probably kill everybody, I think. So let's slash our way through this northwestern, and then we'll run to the aid of everybody else. I think that's probably my best course of action right now. Hopefully everybody that isn't participating in the combat doesn't have blow darts and things of that nature. That would really get us into a rowdy situation, but let's see how far we can move everybody. I know that I have my scouts and some of those types of people here with me. And I don't know why we can't just jump over all this. It's just kind of rugs and things of that nature, so I don't really think it's going to be that pressing. And they're running away. We're taking a little bit more damage right there. It seems like the majority of people are going to try and escape. So I think we'll probably be okay. He didn't even move, which is a weird thing to consider. I can't really move him because he's going to get an attack of opportunity if I do. So I would try for the flanking, but alas, it is what it is. And so we'll stab him in the behind vigorously. Over and over and over again with the stabbing. We're a very stab-happy group, as you've noticed. This entire time we've done little more than kill just loads of people. I'm also going to bring other people to heal, get them in line. We may lose... Yikes. We'll see what happens here. We may lose my hunter, unfortunately. Luckily, we have a lot more hunters, so it should be fine in the end. But for now, I I don't like taking losses. Oh, luckily, we killed somebody that tried to make a move against us. And yeah, we lost the hunter, unfortunately. So he got trapped in a melee combat, which is never a good thing for any type of ranged combatant. But we do have all of the guards killed at this point, so I'm going to come over here and let's get Anna Vidal cured, and then we'll start messing with the stragglers who don't appear to actually be willing to put up any type of fight. So this may actually turn out to be kind of a boring combat. What do they run off to? Oh, he's in the corner. He's hiding. Please, no! Okay, knife. And... Okay, so they're in place. They got him trapped. The opponent is apparently just going to stand around. I actually feel kind of guilty for this combat. This is a little bit, uh, this is a little bit hairy. I actually, this is one of the first times I've actually felt like we've just been murdering indiscriminately. So let's see if we can get people into position to actually do some damage here. I'm gonna use, yeah, let's go ahead and move her to there. And I don't actually really know what Rally is gonna do for me. Is that actually gonna move these guys in the corner too? Oh, it did. Well, it seemed like a reasonable idea just to try out the ability. I don't really get how that's supposed to be useful in many cases, but if it doesn't trigger attacks of opportunity, that's the only way I could see it being anywhere near usable at any time. In which case, it seems a little strange that they gave it to, like, every enemy unit. And now we're just chasing people around the room, just trying to murder them. God. Okay, so we'll put a guy on that one, because they should be able to kill it with one more swing put somebody on him as well. That's going to get an attack of opportunity because I wasn't paying attention. And stabby stab stab. Luckily they are terrible at combat so it's not even going to be a big deal. We need to kill this doctor so I'm going to get to work doing that. And then my other warriors need to close ground with these gents over here. Hopefully without getting themselves into any further rowdiness. So there's five enemies remaining? God it doesn't seem like there's that many. But I guess I must be missing people. He's going to continue running. He's actually going to stab us back. He's going to grow some cajonies and decide to fight with us. Honestly, I think they could have done considerable damage if the AI here had actually chosen to stand and fight. I think they had a considerable advantage given how much they had us actually surrounded. I don't think that we really had too much of an opportunity aside from better stats to actually even the playing field in that situation. But, you know, their loss is my gain, so I'm not really going to complain about it. Down goes that guy. And then we're going to try and pincer them as much as we can. I can't really say that that's going to go according to plan, but in any case, that is what we're trying to enact here. And he's going to hide next to a crate. And down goes the doctor. Yep, relentless and bloodthirsty. What we'll do is we'll move into position right here to finish that guy off on the next turn. Because he is touching two hexes. This guy over here is going to be another victim. And right there, get him stuck again like a little pig being prepared for the dinner table and I suppose the doctor will handle this last guy and so this actually turned out to be more of a boring combat than I thought it would be I thought this was going to be rough for us but pretty uneventful actually it's just more cleanup work than anything else we did lose our hunter pretty early which is a little lame but you know I guess he's just going to sit here and let me stab him to death god 
No! And down he goes. All right, so that dirty little bit of business done. We have a moderate brone fracture on our... A brone fracture. <laughs> a brone fracture. That's what I said. It's a fractured bone on a bro. It's a brone fracture, man. But in any case, in a flash, your men produce their knives and quickly dispatch the Aztec priesthood. The enemy guards are completely taken back, and by the time they engage your people, the deed is already done. Even though the guards are well-armed, your people kill them with only the concealable weapons that they have brought. We take his headdress, and while your people make sure there are no survivors, you walk back to your seat and pick Mamatsli's bloodied headpiece up off the floor. You kick his lifeless form a few times to make sure he's dead as he looks, and then you leave with your men. Nobody stops you on the way out. Great, and so we've actually landed ourselves in a pretty reasonable position here. So let's head back to the Aztecs and see what rewards are on the table when we get this whole thing wrapped up. I'm not really sure what they could offer. We may get to bring the Aztec priestess back with us, or the, I'm sorry, the Amazon leader. We may get to get her as a character, which is good, actually, because we need to garrison our fort. It seems as though they really want us to build a barracks. Now, they word it kind of vicariously, but, or they word it kind of ambiguously, but the general tone that I get from the wording from the barracks is that later on we're going to get attacked at our fort and we're going to have to defend it with whoever's stationed there. So I would prefer to have as many trained combatants as possible hanging out at that location. For all of our jobs, I think we're pretty much good to go. There's not really anything that I want to work on or build at the moment. We make another spike trap. Pintado actually gets a double heal there. He was moderately wounded, which means it should have taken two days to get him taken care of. Instead, it only took one. Let's take a look at our map and make sure that we're going in the right direction. In fact, I was headed in the wrong direction, which it's a good thing I checked. You guys have influenced me that way. I have become a bit of a map hound here, making sure that I always check where I'm headed. And let's absolutely make sure we're going the right way because I recall there being a dead end of sorts down here that I slipped into in the past, but I think we found our way back. Let's make sure that we have the proper location. I don't really remember where the camp was, to be honest. I wasn't paying attention very well. That's a bit of a terrifying thing to think about. I'm going to have Pintado repair his own equipment there. We get two equipment back, and we also gain three meat. Oh, there it is. Right? Is that it? Well, it looks like it. Do I have to actually find her wandering group again? Let's take a look at here and see what's... We just have to bring it back to Kit Lolly. So there's the camp. Where is Kit Lolly? Last time she was up here, so I suppose we'll take a look around, maybe find her. There's another campfire over here, so at least we have breadcrumbs to kind of look for somebody. But I don't see her wandering around, so hopefully we find her before too long, because I would hate to have to spend an episode walking around in circles. We'll hunt for the night there, make another spike trap, and then keep our eyes peeled for our dear, dear friends, the Amazons, who we've come back with a headdress to impress. Headdressed to impress, I guess would be the saying that I would modify for that situation. It seems a little bit weird that they went out and wandered around in my absence, but then again, maybe they got bored. I am going to stop and grab that treasure on the way by, and then we'll just see how the whole thing works. And let me... yeah, we'll cut for a minute while I look for her, so... I'm going to cut the episode until I actually locate her so I don't bore you guys. I know you'll get more out of the episode if I do it that way. So I'll be back in just a moment once I find Kit Lolly. I'll let you know. I'll let you in on the secret of where I located her. Because honestly, we've walked past like two of their camps now. There's nothing to select and there's nobody wandering around. So I'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back. So I found the camp. It took me a good 15 minutes of wandering around looking for it. From what I understand, it moves around like on a weekly basis or something. So it just kind of like teleports around. But we found it, so we're all good. So the Amazon hunting camp is not where you last left it. Yeah, exactly. That's about what I figured. But after searching the general area for a while, a while, like two weeks, <laughs> you eventually encounter a small hunting party of the warrior women and follow them to their new encampment. Kitlali greets you with anticipation. I'm always glad to see you again, Elgato, but tell me, what news do you bring of the Aztec high priest? We give her the headpiece, and Kitlali lights up in the most sincere and relieved smile that ever graced her face. She jumps forward and embraces you warmly. Then she takes the headpiece from you and regards it carefully, still grinning. I'm not sure you understand what this means to me. I get the sense that you have some history with Momozatli. She nods apologetically. You have earned that story. Before we were cast out from the city, Mamatsli had his heart set on marrying me. I rejected him time and time again, but he was persistent, convinced that I would eventually give in. In time, his desire grew bitter. His feelings for me turned reproachful. You friend zoned him. Mamatsli played no part, small part, in passing the law against women fighting for the city. I suspect he hoped it would force me to marry him. When I learned that he wanted me dead, I was not surprised. Since then, his wrath has been like a dark cloud hanging above my head. You have freed me from this invisible presence. She looks 
in deep into your eyes and her voice becomes solemn. Thank you, Elgato. Yeah, let's invite her to come with us. She looks down, apparently considering your offer, then she locks her eyes on yours again. I will join you. Before you have a chance to reply, Kit Lolly hugs you again and runs off to arrange for a gift of food and gold for your expedition. Waiting for her return, we get 20 food and 500 valuables, actually, that's pretty good. And she says, El Gato, this is Takui. She will take charge of our tribe while I am gone. Pleased to meet you, Takui. I hope that you bear me no ill will for stealing away Kit Lolly. Takui smiles and bows. Kit Lolly has trained us. We can defend ourselves if need be. Takui embraces Kit Lolly warmly and fixes her with a severe but affectionate look. Watch after yourself, sister. We will always be here if you have a reason to return. And so everybody gets happy, and Amazon merchants give us a discount now. And so we get a new party member as well, which is someone we can leave behind, which is actually pretty nice. And while that sounds rather harsh on the surface of the thing, because normally in military organizations, leaving people behind is considered something that you kind of try and avoid. It's looked down upon. <laughs> it wouldn't make me the best commander if I was willing to leave people behind, but in this situation, they're actually being left behind with a specific purpose, which is guard duty to take care of our base. Let's look at her and figure out what she does. Where is she at? I'm going through quickly enough here to where I think I've probably run past her a couple times now. Kit Lolly, she is an Amazon. And so let's take a look at her abilities. Go to the people menu, I think, is the one that we want. And then we've got Kit Lolly, her skills. And so at Man at Arms, she gets Poison Sting, which is a ranged attack that applies a damage over time effect. What weapons does she have? An Oak Spear, a Oak Bow, and a set of armor. Okay. It looks like she actually wears the armor that the Spaniards wear, because it starts light, heavy, and then Toledo, which is Toledo Steel, in case you guys didn't know. It's kind of a, it's a big deal, and so I have a friend that's a sword collector, and if you can get your hands on a piece of Toledo Steel, you're, you're in good shape as a collector. But anyways, Deft Strike, it makes an attack that bypasses the target's defense, that's pretty good. At Sergeant, she gets Smoke Bomb, and then she gets Rally, and that's actually tempting to take care of her as well and use her in my main group and actually get rid of Trevino now, who is sitting at that rank, so I think that's what I'll do. I don't really know what her chances are to hit. I may take her into the next battle without leveling her up first. I don't really know if that's a wise idea, but I don't know if she... Oh, well, I can look. So she's got an 80%. Oh, wow, she's just all around amazing. Never mind. We're going to upgrade her and take her. So the first thing we're going to do is we're obviously going to take Relentless. That's hands down one of the better things that I've seen in our group. Additionally, we're going to put her up to Veteran, where we will get her Death Strike, which is seems to do quite a bit of damage. And let's take a look and see what things could actually benefit that. We have some bonus health. We have some things of that nature. We have... An ability that makes her gets healed more. We can increase her crit by half, which actually would benefit her more than anybody else. It would per put her up to a 7.5% chance to crit, which is pretty good. We can also make her better at flanking. But honestly, I don't really know what I want to pick. I think I'll do Bloodthirsty, because honestly, she's going to be killing a lot of people. And I keep saying honestly a lot, and I don't really know why. My brain is just locked onto that right now. But in my... In my... Assertion. I think that's going to be a good thing to give her because she's she's going to be a powerful melee attacker. I can tell already. We're going to increase her guarding skill because the downside is that she's replacing Trevino as a guard. And he's got 10 guarding. And this is going to hurt us overnight. The plus side here is that we can leave Trevino behind to guard the camp. So let's take Trevino's equipment and we'll remove that from him. There we are. And so we've got Ortega, Vidal, and who else has equipment here? Somebody's got extra... Oh, Paulik is who we're replacing. Okay, that's fine. Paulik has done his overall quest. That works out pretty well. And so we'll actually get rid of all of that. And we're going to try and upgrade Kitlali as much as possible. Because both of her weapons actually have the potential to do a lot of damage. We'll give her a little bit of... Oh, she can't be armored. That's the trade-off. Okay, she can't be armored very well. That really doesn't hurt my feelings that much. Is he fully equipped? He is. Pintado, what about you? You've got a couple pieces of equipment missing. And then who else can use a bit more? Vidal? Anything? Nope, Vidal can't use ranged weapons, so there's nothing there for her. Everybody else appears to be more or less maxed out, which is going to be okay. And... Yeah, so he could use two more there. And then I guess we'll just keep the extra equipment on hand, just in case. Our doctor, I suppose I could throw the rest of the equipment on his ranged attack. Not really going to help us that much, but it's something to assign everything to. Now we'll take Kit Lolly, put her on guard duty. Actually, for now, have her patrol, to be fair, because 
we don't really need her to be doing that other thing right now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to head back to Zalapa, let everybody know that we were victorious in our overall quest, and see where they send us for our next mission. Grab that chest there, and it looks like there's butterflies hanging around a grave over here, but I can almost guarantee you we've searched that already. It's right next to the main road, and I, may, I try to make a point of getting everything that's near the main road while I travel around. I'm staying off the road for now because I would really prefer to avoid getting myself into trouble. Well, the thing is, on the roads you have a chance to get robbed that's very, very, it's surprisingly high. Like, your chances to get robbed are absurdly high when you stick to the roads here around all these Aztec settlements and whatnot. They seem to have taken a liking to our shinies, and because I like to keep my grips on my shinies, I say, listen, Aztec, you stay the hell away from my shinies, or I will po <laughs> I will poke you several times with this pointy spear that I carry with me. This is not for decoration, my Aztecian friend. It is for defense of the shinies. And we have arrived back at Zalapa. Let's talk with who we can talk to. Tepic Toten has recently returned from Papantla when you return from your business at the Aztec Farms. He looks tired, but pleased to see you again. I hope your business went as well as mine, El Gato del Splatter. It took some effort, but Papantla is with us. So it's a really good thing that we didn't destroy Papantla. These farms will not be supplying to Noctilan any longer. Those farms, these farms, eh, you know, it's all the same thing. It's all a pointless pointer word. Then our chances against the Aztecs are significantly improved, and your reward will be delivered forthwith. We get a thousand valuables. It has come to my attention that you have reclaimed and rebuilt your predecessor's fortress in the west. No love was lost between my people and his, but I must respect the masonry of your people. Not as imposing as the pyramids of our cities, but it cannot be faulted on practical application. Well, you know, it needed some work. It needed some elbow grease, but you know, you know what I mean. Where did that term come from, elbow grease? I've never had grease come out of my elbow that has been useful for anything. In fact, I don't think I've ever had grease come out of my elbow at all. And so, then our western flank is secure. Now is the time to strike the first direct blow against an Aztec settlement. I propose we hit Quatitlan before we attempt to take Tenochtitlan itself. The chieftain nods, perfect, precisely what I had in mind. We continue along, we get the quest raise Quatitlan, your warriors pose a minor threat or their warriors pose a minor threat. Mine, on the other hand, are quite vicious. They flex quite well. They've got ridiculously busting muscles out of their shirts. Same with the females. They all got boxer's arms. They look like those UFC fighter women. They are all quite terrifying. In fact, I would never give them lip whatsoever because they might choke me out and I would cry in front of my whole group of men and then it would be embarrassing like my fifth grade birthday party. But anyways, as long as the Aztecs control that territory, they can use it against us. We must hold every acre of land north of Tenochtitlan if we hope to stand a chance. And so, though Quatitlan is ravaged by disease, it's a sizable settlement, and I do not expect you to conquer it alone. I've sent a contingent to aid you. Fantastic! And so, I loathe to attack innocents, but, you know, if we've got to wipe this place out, we'll do what we gotta. Tepic Toten shakes your hand. Montezuma, or Moctezuma, will not take kindly to the direct attack on his empire so close to Tenochtitlan. Prepare yourself for war, El Gato del Splatter. Once Quatitlan falls, there will be no going back for any of us. I'm worried that if I attack his settlement, he may end up cursing me, and then I will quite literally be the splatter cat, which will be both disgusting and most people don't want to follow a guy with smelly britches. To be honest, smelly britches are a minor morale drop. So I'm going to walk back to the fortress right now. You guys are welcome to join me or jump to the next episode right here, but I'm going to go back to the fortress and we're going to get the next thing queued up. Additionally, I'd like to leave some people there to defend it, just in case. You never know. Now, let's take a look at our map and make sure that we're traveling in the correct direction because I'd hate to get lost on such a simple journey. We are being forced to stop on the road, which is always a bit dangerous for our supplies. Not for us, but what is this? Oh, merchants. Let's trade with them. So, because they're Totanak, I'm not going to mess with them at all. We will spend some money to get some extra equipment because I would like to equip people as I leave them to defend the settlement. Equipment makes a large difference in this game. In fact, it's honestly a little bit better than adding level ups. Not really. Like, level ups, as you get higher and higher, the level ups do quite a bit for your accuracy. But for melee characters, if you just strap a bunch of gear on them, they seem to be pretty fine from their basic level. So, just being absolute noobs, they still seem to be able to get the, the right end of the sword right when they thrust it towards people so they're not thrusting the handle or anything. Now, everything is going according to plan as we travel. That pig is on the road and therefore he is fair game, quite literally. Before we head back to finish this off, because it does feel as though the game is falling to a close. After we finish Quatit Lawn, I may try to do El Dorado, figure out the quest down there, do a little bit of reading. It was a little text heavy the last time I went there, so I was a little antsy to start something like that because it's a lot of reading and my voice gets kind of shabby after a while. Let's buy out the rest of this equipment and that's going to put me to 3,500 valuables. That's fine. We can start our next construction. Going here. 
Your workers have completed the workshop and are once again at your disposal. At the workshop, you can ask your artisans to set aside a certain type of crafting material every week to be paid to you as rent for using the workshop. Return regularly to collect those materials or to change which material they will pay you. Alright, let's expand the fortress and... At this point, we're going to rebuild the barracks. And so there it is. The barracks is up and ready to go. And I think that leaves us in a great spot to break off the episode. I'm going to pass the five days. Once I do that, we'll actually leave our garrison here. And we will head back out to deal with the Aztecs. It's been a pleasure, guys. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for once again... Expeditions Conquistador. I hope you've been enjoying it. I have been having a blast with this game. In fact, I'm very much looking forward to the end of it just to see what crazy stuff they're going to throw at us. So I'll see you guys next time and take care out there, everybody.